Here in 2.3, excuse me, I got that backwards. Here in 3.2, uh, we look at the derivatives of exponentials and logarithms. Makes sense based on what we covered in 3.1, where we used both of those. Uh, so far, we only know the derivatives for polynomials, so we definitely want to expand on that. Okay, the first question on the table. We're going to start with e raised to the x. What is the derivative? What is d over dx of e to the x? And all right, well, let's uh, let's see what it says. Um, so we're just going to consider that to be a function. All right, f of x equals e to the x. And uh, you know, the only thing we have here is the limit definition we need to fall back on, right? Um, it was that limit definition that uh, helped us uh, learn the power rule for powers of x. Well, same thing here with e to the x. We're going to say, okay, if f of x equals e to the x, what would that limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient do? And so here is just that formula that we've used many times by now. Uh, f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0, f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. So we'll apply that to this function and arrive at this. f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0. f of x plus h, well, the x plus h would go in, right? So it would be e raised to the x plus h minus e to the x. And that's all divided by h. And we kind of look at this, and you're like, what could you possibly do with that? Um, how can this be simplified? Um, OK, so a little bit different than anything we've seen before, because we've really been working with polynomials up till now. Let's do this. When you look at e to the x plus h, we can break that down a little bit. Think of it this way. e to the x plus h is e to the x times e to the h. And if you remember your rules for exponents, then this would make sense. Um, if you've got the same base and you're multiplying, you add the exponents. So we're used to going from stuff like that to, the, to here, but certainly we can go in the reverse direction as well. So, so far, uh, it's all equivalent. We're just rewriting. And now notice, hey, both terms here in this numerator have an e to the x. So we can factor that. So now f prime of x equals the limit as h approaches 0. e to the x times the quantity e to the h minus 1 all over h. We factored out the e to the x. Now, notice something here e to the x this part does not have any h's right there's an h there and an h there and subtraction we can factor that e to the x all the way out in front and this is not something that we have done before but i'm hoping this makes sense here you cannot normally do this you cannot normally move terms out written before the limit but we can get away with it in this case because there's no h's so this limit as h goes to zero does not affect e to the x and e to the x multiplies with everything else so we'll multiply it here this is the limit that we need to look at and whatever that answer is then we'll multiply it here and we'll have our answer okay so what do you do with the limit as h approaches 0, e to the h minus 1 all over h? Now, you could approach this multiple ways. Um, we notice that if we were to attempt to plug in 0 for both h's, we'd have e to the 0 minus 1 over 0. But e to the 0 is 1, and so that would come out to be 0 over 0. There is a whole at h equals 0. So we, there is an answer to this. It's not undefined. 
In order to get that though, there's no more simplification we can do algebraically. The best way to go here would be to use a table um, and approach H approaches zero from the left and from the right. Okay, We could do it that way. Instead though, I'm just going to tell you what this works out to be, <laughs> if that's okay. So to avoid creating tables here, I'm just going to tell you if you were to create a table and approach zero from the left and from the right, this thing would come out to be one. Both the left and the right limits would be approaching positive one. And I invite you to check that out if you if you desire. Um, it, it plays out very nicely. So this whole limit equals one. Okay, so then it's one multiplied with e to the x. Well, that's just e to the x. So f prime of x equals e to the x. Let me let that sink in for a moment. What just happened? Your jaw should be dropped. Your jaw should be on the floor. You should be like grabbing, you know, the sides of your head shaking. Like, what? Oh, I can't believe this. Why is this so incredible? Okay, what was the original function? e to the x. Our function was e to the x. What's the derivative of that? Also e to the x. This function, its derivative is just itself. And that is shocking. Uh, we did not see that coming, right? That is not true of other derivatives. It just is equal to the same original function. But that is the case for e to the x. And actually part of uh, the reason how e got prominence was people needed an answer to, hey, is there a function out there whose derivative is itself? And they realized it's true for e to the x. And all the more reason E became popular as calculus developed. Okay, I know you guys are all about the history, but that's all I can say for now. We need to move on. Let's do an example. Put this into practice. We'll keep it simple here. Um, how about Y equals 5 E to the X? Let's take the derivative. Um, what's the derivative of 5 e to the x? Well, we have a constant multiple. So the 5 is just going to carry along. And then we look at the derivative of e to the x. But we just learned it's itself. And so here, y prime equals the 5 carrying down. And then the derivative of e to the x is e to the x. And there you go. Okay, I've got another example. Um, turns out I've, you can kind of see my notes to myself. Um, I decided to rearrange the order of things. So I need to turn a couple of pages to show you this example. Here we go. Let's find the equation of the tangent line. Well, we've done this sort of thing before. Um, and we're going to see more and more of these as we learn new derivative styles and patterns and formulas. So we're going to find the equation of the tangent line to f of x equals 7e to the x plus 2x to the third minus 4. OK. Now, whenever you find the equation of a line, remember you need two pieces of information. You need to know the slope of that line, and you need to know a point that that line passes through. So to find the slope of the tangent line, well, that comes from the derivative. We need a point. This does not give us a point. I think I wanted, OK. I did not give you enough information. My mistake. Let's find the equation line, this function at x equals 0. OK. Now we're going to be able to find that point. 
Sorry about that. Okay, let's get back to it. So to find the slope of the line, we need the derivative. So f prime of x, and we'll see what it is here. Well, for the 7 e to the x, that derivative is 7 e to the x. 2 x to the third, there's our power rule, plus 6 x squared, and the derivative of the minus 4, of course, is 0. Once we have the derivative, we're going to plug in our x value to find the slope of the tangent line at that particular x. So we're going to look at f prime 0, plugging in 7 e to the 0 plus 6 times 0 squared. Well, that's 0, and e to the 0 is 1. So this gives us f prime 0 equals 7. So we know the slope of our tangent line right there is 7. We also need a point. Well, if x is 0, we need to know the y-coordinate at that point. Here we plug the 0 into the original function. So plugging 0 into the derivative gives us the slope. Plugging it into the original function tells us the y-coordinate of the point. And you think, okay, plugging 0 in, let's see, 7 e to the 0, that'd be 7 plus 0 minus 4. 7 minus 4 gives us the 3. It goes through the point 0, 3. Okay. Oh, it looks like I've got the work right there. 7 e to the 0 plus 2 times 0 to the third minus 4. There's the 3. Yeah. Now that we know the slope and we know a point, we can use the point slope form. y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. We've done this. Uh, y minus 3 equals 7 times the quantity x minus 0. Solve for y. And this one's nice with the 0. Here, y equals 7x plus 3. And we got the equation of the tangent line to this function at 0. Pretty cool. OK. Uh, let's stop this video here. We're going to learn derivatives of logs next.